John with Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're going to go over the new question types for the ATI TIS 7 and some of the best strategies and tips for answering them. We're all familiar with the multiple choice, but we may not be as familiar with the select all that apply, the fill in the blank, ordered response, hotspot questions. So we're going to go over all that in this video, so stay tuned. Now before we get into it, I want to make sure that you guys check out the links in the description below. There are a ton of great free resources. There's a free T7 practice test, our free T7 boot camp, our Facebook study group that's got over 12,000 members all taking the T's, preparing for the test, sharing the resources, what worked, how they passed the test. So I want to make sure that you guys are a part of that community. There's also links to our online course, our practice test pack, study planners, lots of great resources. Make sure you check all that out. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We have a lot of videos coming out to help you guys pass the T's. So the first question type that we'll go over is the select all that apply. Now this is a question that will typically have between four to seven answer choices and most likely you'll see something like five answer choices. Now this is an infamous question from the NCLEX and we're starting to see the T's and the NCLEX come a little bit closer together in terms of the question types. Nothing to do with the content but these are questions that ultimately will end up on the NCLEX. So unfortunately with select all that apply there is no partial credit given for answering some of the answer options correct and some incorrect. You have to answer all of them correct. The types of questions that you might see on a multiple select question or the select all that apply is maybe which option uses the correct grammar to combine two sentences and you have to identify the correct grammar in those answer choices. Uh, which of the following options are misspelled in the sentence above or in the passage above? Which of the following sentences corrects a run on sentence? Or in science you might see something like which is true regarding the urinary system and you'd have to identify all those statements as true or not. The best way to approach a select all that apply question is to turn each answer option into a true false question. So instead of looking at it as one big select all that apply question, it's really more like four to seven individual true false questions rolled into one question. So you look at that option and, and just turn it into a question, true or false, does this statement apply to this option? And that's really the best way to uh, approach these questions. So one tip is that you can try to link some of these select all that apply answer options that are very close to each other. So if you see that they're similar, you want to choose both of them. Or if you see that you know definitely these two are wrong, you want to eliminate both of them. Uh, so at the same time, you want to make sure you aren't selecting totally conflicting answers is more of the idea. We always recommend to go with your first response on a select all that apply. Uh, don't go back after you leave that question. Now, one reason is that you're wasting precious time on the test and more often than not, when you change it and you end up going back, you're wrong. And, and that's what, you know, the numbers and the statistics show. So. Be careful of answer choices that have words like always or never in these select all that apply questions. Uh, things are rarely black and white like that or very constant things that never change. So more often than not, uh, things always change and these always and never in the answer options is not going to be the correct answer. Now we're going to say this over and over again with all these different question types. You need to make sure that you are fully understanding what the question is asking you and make sure that the answer options relate to what is being asked. They will throw in a few answer options to try and throw you off. Um, so it could be a true statement, but it doesn't actually have to do with the question being asked. And we talked about turning things into a true false statement. You just make sure that you double check that it is answering the question that's being asked. Now really the best thing that you can do to get better at these select all that apply questions is practice as many as you can and Smart Edition Academy has you covered there. We will be continuously adding more select all that apply questions than we already have in our online course and our practice test packs which contain question banks with thousands of questions and you can bet that these new question types are going to be in the course and the practice test pack. Now with the select all that apply it's okay to take a little bit longer on these question types because like we mentioned, it's not just one question, it's really you know four to seven questions. So if you're going to take longer on any questions on the test, this is the one to do it on. Now another thing is that it's not impossible, but it is very rare that it will be either just one option or all of the options. Not to say it couldn't happen, but typically that's not going to be the case. So uh, avoid that and just know that it's usually not going to be that. 
And the next question type is supply the answer or fill in the blank. Now you want to make sure to understand what the question is asking, like with all these questions, but you want to make sure to read very carefully how they want you to enter the answer. So they're going to give you specific instructions at the end of the question, and it's going to say things like um, to add the dollar sign or not, or to not have commas, or to round to the nearest cent, things like that. And you don't want to have the right answer and enter it wrong and get it incorrect. It's just a mistake you don't want to make. So make sure you're reading how to enter the question very, very carefully. Now, generally, fill-in-the-blank questions are not going to be the most difficult questions you'll see, but they are harder because you don't have multiple choice uh, options to guess or eliminate answer choices. So the math that you'll see in these types of questions, it's going to be pretty basic, um, you know, multiplication, division, but again, you don't have the answer choices, so it can seem a little more difficult. So time is crucial on the test, and we'll say this over and over again. Now, for these fill-in-the-blank questions, these are ones, again, that you might want to spend a little bit more time on just to double-check your work, make sure you're entering it in the exact way that they're asking you to enter it, and make sure that you know what the question is being asked. So don't be afraid to spend a little more time on these question types. Now, many of the fill-in-the-blank questions will revolve around basic math, and that includes both in the math section of the test and the reading section, which we're less familiar with seeing math on. So for the reading section, what they're really testing you on is your reading comprehension skills. Can you read this sentence or two and pull out the rele relevant information to do this simple math equation and not get distracted by other things that may be in these sentences that are not relevant? Now, another tip is to never assume the length of the blank where you will enter the question has anything to do with the length of the answer. If you're putting in, uh, you know, just two digits, don't think that because it's bigger, you need to have four decimals after or vice versa. You've got four decimals, but the box is really small where you enter in your answer. Uh, so you're going to take away some of those decimals. Don't do that. It has nothing to do with the actual answer. Now, the next question type is ordered response or kind of sequencing. And this is going to have a couple answer choices on the left side of your screen under the question and an empty box on the right side and you will need to drag the answers in the correct order into the box on the right side. Now this is another difficult question type. I know these are all difficult but this is difficult and the reason is because all of the answer options are correct. There's no incorrect answers. And so you need to really, instead of simply picking one answer choice, you must consider multiple true statements and then organize them appropriately, uh, typically in sequential order. Now, the examples of questions that you might see for these ordered response or sequence questions are things like in math, it will say order numbers from least to greatest or ascending to descending order. And you might have fractions and whole numbers and negative numbers and even square roots. And you might need to do some conversions to put them all into a decimal so that you can answer uh, this type of math ordered response question. Uh, for English, you might see correct, uh, the correct order of the writing process and you'll have to know what that is from start to finish and order those correctly. Science, we might see things like logical ordering of events to show a cause and effect relationship. And this initial cause uh, creates these effects. Another science one would be arrange the steps that outline how the urinary system works or arrange the steps of the blood flow through the heart. Now, the secret to success for this question type is to be extremely rigid in your thinking. These questions are based on the premise that one, there is only one correct order of things or sequence of steps. Two, every step must be followed in its proper order. And three, no steps may be skipped or omitted. So you have to be very rigid and, and, and know that these are a thing when you are answering this question type. Now, a couple of strategies for the ordered response questions are if you're not sure which item should be placed first in the list, determine which item is last or vice versa. If you know which item is first, at least put that one in. It's going to give you less answer options to continue and make it a little bit easier. And just go by what you know for sure to start. And if you had to guess on the last one or two, then you can try and do that. But it's really going to help to at least put in what you do know. Hotspot questions uh, involve pictures or diagrams. However, they're set up a little different than the graphics uh, type questions that you'll see in other sections like math or reading. A test taker will be given a question and asked to identify a specific area within a single picture or a diagram, which is the hotspot. 
Now, most often this type of question is going to try and test to see if you're familiar with the anatomy or the anatomical landmarks on a specific system, like maybe the heart, and it will ask you to you know, point it out on the diagram. Now, some tips and strategies for these, make sure that you are looking at each of the images very carefully and the clickable area. So kind of darting your eyes around, looking really quickly, looking at them all as a whole and not individually is a great way to accidentally miss the correct answer option or the correct spot that you should be clicking on the screen. So take the time to look at everything uh, before clicking on the one that you think is correct and make sure that you're just going slow and taking your time. Now really hotspot questions are just multiple choice questions. These are essentially the same as any other multiple choice question and they can be treated in much the same way. You've got four answer options and only one is correct. So that's gonna be a little bit different from these other alternative question types where either all the options are correct, there are no options or uh, some but not all are gonna be correct. So that's it for this video. These are the new question types. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Again, subscribe to the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or if you have any strategies or tips for these question types that you wanna share, put them in the comments below, ask any questions. We are here to help you and answer those questions. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next video.